Sarbanes-Oxley, you've probably heard about Sarbanes-Oxley uh, in many of your classes already, uh, and it certainly plays a role in the controls environment with regard to corporate governance, including its statement that uh, companies need to have a code of ethics. So code of ethics can actually be considered a form of control by outlining explicitly expectations for employees in the company, hopefully prompting ethical behavior by those employees. And this is important, especially in large companies that cover multiple cultural areas, multiple uh, geographic areas, uh, certainly even within the U.S., but uh, definitely worldwide. Uh, you've got different cultures that have different expectations, uh, in particular for how business is performed. We have certain expectations for bribe, kickbacks, things like that, that here in the U.S. Other cultures uh, may consider that just sort of part of the normal and accepted way of doing business. So companies can use that code of ethics to, to ensure that uh, they have a consistent uh, code throughout their organization. And of course, we've got codes of ethics in a lot of professional organizations. Uh, we have them here in the AI, in the uh, CPA profession. The AI CPA manages those. Uh, and then each state board has a code of ethics as well. For the most part, they tend to fall right out of uh, what the AI CPA code of ethics is and mirror it to a large degree with some of the key variations being in uh, licensing requirements, uh, naming uh, permissions for what you can and cannot call a firm, uh, advertising and poaching uh, guidelines, things like that. Of course, other professions have them. You've got uh, uh, the Bar Association, uh, ABA has a uh, code of ethics for attorneys. You've got the uh, medical code of ethics for physicians. Uh, even uh, certain professions like electricians have a code of ethics for their professional unions. All right, so let's uh, move on. And some of the examples, uh, well, we just talked about a few of those, uh, AICPA, but also in accounting, we've got ISACA. ISACA is a, uh, an organization based out of Chicago that manages uh, COBIT, one of the frameworks we're going to talk about, and that focuses on the IT aspect of internal controls. Institute of Internal Auditors. So internal auditors are kind of a, uh, have their own organization, uh, so you could be a member of the AICPA and Internal Institute of Internal Auditors. And, and there is a code of ethics for how to conduct internal audits. Institute of Management Accountants. So management accountants certainly want to uh, do things ethically as well. All right. So Sarbanes-Oxley requires all public companies that are registered with the SEC and the auditors to assess and report on the design and effectiveness of internal control. And the way that design or that report is uh, put together varies slightly for the two uh, constituencies. So public companies self-assess. They assess their own internal control environment and report on it. Auditors then assess the company's report and report on how accurate, or basically render an opinion on that company's internal control environment. So there's a slight distinction there, but uh, in essence, both companies have to go through and do a pretty thorough review of internal controls. Sarbanes actually established PCAOB to provide independent oversight of public accounting firms. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Uh, there's talk right now of the PCAOB getting folded back into the SEC and no longer existing as a separate organization. Uh, we'll see where that goes. But right now, auditing standard number five from the PCOB tells auditors or encourages, strongly encourages auditors to use a risk-based top-down approach to identify key controls. So you start at the top level of uh, operations, uh, generally what we in the audit might call uh, accounts, uh, inventory, for example. And how are we going to assess the controls and determine what they should be for inventory? and so on down the line. All right, so the next concept is something we call corporate governance. Corporate governance is basically a set of processes and policies designed to help manage the organization ethically 
uh, with regard to safeguarding the interests of its various stakeholders. So the idea here is we want to promote accountability, fairness in operations, transparency in the relationship with those various stakeholders. So the stakeholders have a pretty high comfort level uh, of what's going on in the organization.